We've spoken at length about sequences, and now we have to move on to the next natural thing, which are series, infinite series, sums. All we're going to be doing now is we're going to be adding up a bunch of things, infinitely many things. We're going to see if we can get something that makes sense or not in limits. Okay. So in this video, we're going to begin by talking about infinite series and the compact way to represent them, summation notation. So we, if I have a long string of things that I'm adding together, like here I have 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, and then that pattern continues on. Okay. Well, let's first understand that each of these terms here, okay, each of these little bits here is a term of a sequence here. So if we consider, say, the sequence a n equals, well, what happens here? When n is equal to 1, we have a plus 1. When n is equal to 2, we get a minus 1. 3, we get a plus 1. So it looks like we're alternating at each stage. And when the index is odd, we have a plus sign. When the index is even, we have a minus. So we can deduce that the general rule for the corresponding sequence here is minus 1 to the n minus 1. And that makes sense here, right? We can look here. A1 is minus 1 to the 1 minus 1. That's just plus 1. A2 is minus 1 to the 2 minus 1, which is a negative 1, and so on. Now, if we stack these together, okay, and then just add all the corresponding terms, we get what's called an infinite series. And the way that we can express this is using sigma notation, summation notation. So in general here, if we want to express a sum as the following, say I have a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus out to some index, maybe say ak, then maybe it goes on forever. Okay. Well, I can compactly write this using summation notation as follows. So this symbol here is the capital sigma. Okay. It is the symbol that we use to represent the addition of a bunch of things. Okay, and I'm going to index this, my rule, my sequence, a n, and n is my dummy variable. Okay, think about it like the variable of integration. Okay. And now n is going to range from 1 to infinity, which means I'm going to sum up all these things. Okay, so in fact, I don't even need this a k, but if I want to stop at a k, my upper index there would be k. And so this is how we can compactly write this infinite series. And so how do we do it for our guy here? 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, which I believe is called Grandi's series. Okay. Well, we know what our terms are. Our corresponding sequence is minus 1 to the n minus 1. We start at n equals 1 and go to infinity. So the corresponding infinite series here, we've written as follows. We'll take the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1. And that's all you have to do here. That is all you have to do. Let's take a look at another one here. Now, this interesting fellow, 1 minus a fourth plus 9 minus a sixteenth. Do you think you see what the next one is? Well, let's look at the terms here real quick, okay? Well, I have 1, then a fourth, then a ninth, and a sixteenth, but those denominators, right? Let's write that 1 as a 1 over 1, shall we? Now think about the denominators of this of the sequence here. You have 1, 4, 9, 16. What do you think comes next? Next would be 25, right? And we have a plus and for alternating signs, plus, minus, plus, minus. So the next term would be, say, maybe 1 over 25, then maybe minus 1 over 36. Well, what, what is the rule? We're taking the reciprocals of squares and then we're alternating the signs here. So we can deduce here that our rule here, the corresponding sequence is, let's write it like this, negative 1 to the n minus 1 over n squared. And that does indeed give me the rule that we want, right? You know, when n equals 1, I get a 1. n equals 2 gives me a 4, a minus 1 fourth, and so on. Okay, and this, written in summation notation compactly, is just like this. We're going to sum from n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n squared. And that is all you need to do to write this as an infinite series using the compact summation notation, this capital sigma, the sigma notation. So all we have to do here, okay, if we identify the corresponding sequence, these a n's here, let's come back up here. If I can identify what this a n is here, which I've done here, then that goes as my, think about it like an integral, that's like the function you're integrating, your integrand, okay? We're going to call these the sum ands, okay? 
the corresponding sequence goes in as a sum and, and we're going to go from, say, 1 to infinity, just like we did with definite integrals. And in fact, you regard these as the discrete version of integrals, or you can regard integrals as a continuous version of these sums. So if you, you, what you have to do is understand what is the rule, and then you can compactly write this as a nice, tidy box with the capital sigma. And that is all we need here so far. So this was a rather quick one, but this is just the introduction here. Okay, now that we know how to work with the notation, let's actually get into some mechanics here, okay? What does it mean to really add up infinitely many things? Now you're gonna have to watch the next one for that. And I'll see you in the next one.